Let's talk about using C++ for Unreal. If you're here, that means you probably are either here from a background in an engine like Unity, or you've already watched my Unreal Basics tutorial series, in which we do work with blueprints. If you haven't watched that, go skim through it and see if there's anything interesting in there that you want to see first, because I'm going to skip over a lot of those things here. Let's start by setting up a project now. I'm using Unreal 5.1.1 for this, but most of this should be transferable to both Unreal 5, even some versions of Unreal 4 probably, and up to 5.3 and probably beyond for quite a while. So in this series we're going to make something a little bit like a twin stick shooter, and none of this really works too well for that as a template. I would say. So we're going to have to recode quite a bit. But I do think the top-down template probably is the closest to what we're going to be using. So I'm going to use that as a template so we have a starting point and we don't need to start actually from scratch. And the project defaults we're going to set to C++ because we're going to be writing C++ code. Everything else doesn't matter that much. I'm going to call this CPP Tutorial Basics and we're going to create the project, which will take a little moment. While that is setting up, I want to show you the IDE that I'm using. That's Visual Studio Code. I will leave a link down below in the description to where you can download it, because I'm actually using this Unreal Engine 4 Snippets plugin, which I can highly, highly recommend. It says Unreal 4 Snippets, but it all works with Unreal 5 as well. And that allows you to make some things a lot easier. Having all these macros that would usually be kind of bothersome to work with, Oh, apparently it also has a set timer one. I have never used that one, but that's good to know. So in Visual Studio, go to your extensions and look for Unreal Engine for snippets and just install that to your IDE. And just as I finish explaining that, the project starts up. So let's go into the editor preference real quick because we want to make sure if we type in source code editor, that it's set to Visual Studio Code. If you have any other IDEs installed, like Visual Studio or, I don't know, C-Line, don't even know when I would have installed that, uh, you want to set this to Visual Studio Code because that's usually uh, what I like to use because of that plugin. And now we can see we have a project file like we used to, but we have a folder with C++ classes. And if we open that up, and we can see we have a player controller and a game mode and a character. So let's open up that character and when that opens up you might get a pop-up like this and you just say yes I trust the authors. And that opens up our first couple of files which we'll talk a little bit more about how these files are structured and what they're doing in the upcoming parts. For now though you want to make sure that everything here doesn't give any errors or anything and if there is any errors that you don't really know what to do with. If you haven't done anything as far as adding any code yet, it's most likely because you need to build your uh, Visual Studio project file. So you can just right click on the U project file here in the left hand side. If you don't have this explorer, it's this icon up here that will collapse it. And we can reveal that in our explorer. If you right click on that in your Windows Explorer, you can generate Visual Studio project files and that will just regenerate any missing project files for Visual Studio. So if you've just added a new C++ class, sometimes you do need to do that. It should do it automatically, but for me, it oftentimes just straight up doesn't. And let me zoom in a little bit here, just so you can see what is all going on. Now, we're not going to do any actual coding here yet today. We're just setting up the project and going over some of the most basic features, one of which is going to be live coding. Because... Unlike what you might be used to in Blueprint, where you are inside the engine, inside the editor, making all of your code, we're writing our code in a separate program. So any time we want to apply the changes we have made, we need to rebuild the engine. And that is a very lengthy process, because that would require us to close down the engine, build, and then reopen. And that would be very, very annoying. So luckily, there is something called live coding going back into the engine here. If we go into the project settings, we can look into live, maybe that's in the editor preferences. I always get those mixed up. Live coding, it is in the editor preferences. So we can enable it. We can also disable it if we really, really, really don't want to use it. But let's say that we want to just 
add a new variable to our tutorial basics character. We can just add a float and we'll call this test float for now. And don't worry too much about what I'm doing here. We'll talk about that in a later video, uh, but I'll mark it as a U property that is visible anywhere. In order for this test float to be visible for us in engine, we need to now use live coding. So if we go back into the engine here, we can see this little icon, uh, which you can't see actually. So let me, this little icon here in the bottom right, it recompiles and reloads the C++ code for your game on the fly. So if I press this, it will start recompiling everything and I misspelled visible anywhere. So let's try it again now that I have that fixed and it will recompile the changes you have made and after it's done all that which will take a minute especially the first time it will take a minute because it needs to compile a lot of stuff after this it will only recompile the changes that you have made and now if we go into our top down our blueprint that is based on that c++ class that we've just added it we'll be able to see somewhere in here let's open full blueprint editor real quick we have a test float, which is visible. It's only visible, we can't edit it because I marked it as visible anywhere. Again, we'll do a separate video specifically on U properties because it's something that I really, really need you to understand, but not for right now. Another way to do that is going back into your code editor here, your IDE. Uh, let's copy this over and say we want test float two as well. A shortcut that you can do while inside Visual Studio Code so you don't have to go back to Unreal and press that little button that's very hard to hit sometimes, especially on a bigger resolution screen. Uh, you can also press Ctrl Alt F11 and that is a shortcut that will recompile and live code everything as well. And now we'll be able to see we have Test Float and Test Float 2. You'll also know, by the way, this is very useful because I'm using this specific capitalization uh, technique where we capitalize the first letter of every word in the variable. It automatically puts in spaces for us there. So that makes things just a little bit more readable, which is quite nice. Now let's close the engine and restart it. And you will see there's a little bit of an issue there. Now that I have restarted the engine because I just stopped working for the day, or maybe I managed to crash the engine and it restarted on its own. I don't have the two floats here anymore. And that is because live coding only, for lack of a better term, patches in the new additions that you've made into your current session. So it's not actually recompiling the engine as a whole. And there's two ways to go about fixing that. Number one is, I think, in the editor preferences. Maybe this one is in the project preferences. We will see. In your editor preferences, you can tick the force compilation at startup, which will force the source code to compile into your engine anytime you start the project, which can be very useful to fix things like this, because that way, whenever you start up the project, you will have the latest version of whatever code you have written, because it will always compile. That said, if you have a error in your source code anywhere, so let's say we misspelled this and we wanted to make a float instead of a float, that's not going to compile because this is a data type that does not exist. And if you want to compile the engine every time you start up a project, because of this error, the engine itself is just not going to start. So while it is very useful to compile the engine upon startup every single time, it's also quite tricky because it might lead to you not be able to open your project in the first place. Of course, you can still access all this code because it's in separate files, but Maybe you don't want to bother with coding, you just want to play around with particle effects. Well, that's tough luck, because you need to fix your compile errors before you can even do that, if you enable that option. So, I personally don't like turning this on, but it is there if you think uh, you are brave enough to deal with that. The other solution is coming up here, and let's just um, put that back. Turning the engine back off again, this is very important, you can't compile and build the engine while it's running so you need to close it down and then with Control shift and b we get a bill so we can build our game and our engine and we'll look for our project name editor win64 development build that is the one you want to build so if you just press that it will start building the whole engine and now 
after this, when we open up the engine again, it will actually have all of these changes baked into it. And the wonderful thing is, if I press Ctrl Shift B again now, it is on top here in recently used tasks. So I can just keep doing this over and over again without having to look for it every single time. So now we have the engine back open yet again. Let's go into this blueprint. There's no live coding enabled at all at the moment. So let's see if I look for our test floats. They both exist anyway, because we've built the entire engine. So those are some of the more basic things that you need to know about just how the IDE and the engine interact with each other. We're not going to go into any actual coding today. Next time we will talk about making classes and how and when to use C++ and how and when to use blueprints. Because both of them are going to come together to make a very smooth and nice development process for us all. And a very big thank you to all of my patrons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thank you to Eleanor for supporting at the Cave Digger tier on Patreon.